Okay, Uncle Mud, what are we working on today? Ah, hi there. We have this wonderful rocket mass heater that was designed as a test seven years ago for have it run for a year with an, um, an experimental core made out of uh, 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 autoclaved concrete that had been um, set at high temperatures in a vacuum so that instead of little bits of, uh, of pebbles inside of it as aggregate, it had bubbles of air so that it was insulative. Um, it wasn't designed for handling high temperatures like this, but it did a nice job at insulating the inside core of our rocket heater. So uh, over time, you can see that this hole that started out about eight inches in diameter has considerably worn and in some places broken. And uh, so, and then the combining that with, but it still worked just fine. It's warmed the space really well, uh, but it's actually uh, become a problem um, because our, our friends who use this space, um, there's, uh, no, everybody's working elsewhere all day and doesn't have time to keep firing the rocket heater to charge the thermal mass bench that keeps the place warm overnight. Um, which it does a great job if there's somebody here, say, working from home or, or, or uh, homeschooling the kids as they were before um, and just dropping something in the, uh, every time they walk past. So we did find, uh, do you want to grab some of those? Uh, um, we'll show people what we found, the, the, the sawdust blocks. There you go. Um, we did find that the, uh, the same rocket heater that needs to be fed every half hour or less um, will burn just fine for two, two, two and a half hours. This one burns two and a half hours. On the two and a half hours with a block of, uh, with four of these? Yep. With four of these, or about two hours with two of them. Yep. Um, and uh, the, uh, and that was a good step forward for having something that, uh, uh, that the person who uses this space could just uh, light up when they got up and started warming when they, uh, when they left, and then when they get home, fire it up again, like a mass heater uh, would do. Um, so, uh, we tested that and we also tested this other heater that we're installing in its place and found that uh, um, two of these would last for uh, about four and a half or more hours um, and uh, uh, three of them would last six uh, and still have coals left over when we got up the next morning, um, which is going to actually be better for this space uh, for there to be a uh, hot fire going, charging the thermal mass bench all day while they're gone, and then all night after they've lit it up. Um, so we're replacing this with a uh, model that's going to work better here. Um, and in the process, we're using that as an excuse. Uh, the sawdust blocks work out to be about 33 cents a piece, uh, which is uh, pretty comparable to the hardwood scraps that we've been using um, if you include with the price of the hardwood scraps the labor of putting them all in boxes and stacking them and whatnot. Um, and this is about a little less than half of the space it takes to store those hardwood scraps or a cord, cordwood lumber. Um, so these, are, these work pretty well and it's a uh, recycled biomass while it's pulled out of the industrial waste stream, which I like better than just chopping down trees for that purpose. Sure. Um, so our... Uh, our uh, purpose, part of our purpose here is an excuse to actually uh, vivisect this, uh, uh, this heater uh, and see how well it's been doing. You can see that it has some cracks in it from before. Um, our uh, friends who used to live here decided to light the thing using uh, gasoline uh, and a normal wood stove uh, would have blown up and uh, killed him. Uh, <laughs> uh, instead, it just popped this off and uh, left a crack here and popped these uh, clean outs, these little metal clean outs out and we had to put them back. Um, and, uh, and then so his, but his wife still nearly killed him uh, for doing that in front of the, the teenage boy who would probably uh, have done it again. So um, this is a bit loose and we're actually going to pull this off and if we want to grab some buckets to put our 
our uh, mud in, this cob can be recycled by soaking it in water, and then we'll use it again, and again, and again. But this... Can I pull them yeah, absolutely. So we're just pulling these little pieces off. Yeah. It certainly is exciting that you can just take the materials right off like that and then reuse them later. Yeah. Partly because we wanted this to be easy to be popped off in case we wanted to repair it or clean it. Um, the, uh, unlike a normal wood stove that you need to actually get in at least once a year with a stiff uh, chimney brush and, uh, uh, and uh, completely clean out the creosote that's stuck to the sides of the chimney, this doesn't really have any creosote in it. It might have some ash in it. Um, and, uh, well, actually we're going to find out because I might actually be wrong and I, that's something I actually want to know. So I'm going to bust that free back there and then we're going to try to lift this straight up because if there's still a heat riser in here, it's going to be about yay tall. Mm -hmm. So we want to lift it up and over. Mm -hmm. Okay, we still need to get some more out. Do you think you have enough manpower for this? Yeah, it's a... Okay, well look at that. Our heat riser is still mostly there. <laughs> look at that. Okay. Now, remind me again what that material was. So that you... this heat riser that I was ex expecting to, this is two pieces of autoclaved concrete. This autoclaved concrete is just um, Portland cement mixed with chemicals uh, that let you blow bubbles into it and, and then set it in a hot oven at about 2,000 degrees that, uh, uh, in a vacuum so that it fills... Uh, it's so that it's very light, so it's hollow, and we were um, wanting to see how well this would hold. So this is um, this is held pretty well. It's falling apart a little bit, and that's just fine because we're done with it. Uh, but it's uh, we were afraid it would completely erode the inside, and uh, and you can see what I was talking about. This is all ash. There's no creosote here but there is some ash from, uh, from the, all of the uh, wood that's, the wood ash that's been blown up through here and from the cardboard that people have used to start it, uh, mostly from newspaper probably, because the other stuff's light enough that it just stays put. So... That's ash from seven years though. This is ash from seven years of, of uh, and it also shows us where the exhaust stream is, because it comes up here and then circulates around the inside of that barrel. And then because the output is over here, it would slide there and drop the ash uh, on its way out the door there. So now we and can- And then you can see the way in which that output then feeds underneath right. the thermal mass in the bench. Yep, there's a pipe that goes into the bench and comes along here, it comes along here. And there's a clean out over here in case there's some ash gets stuck in the bench and then it comes here and up and out here and then there's a there's a uh, triple insulated uh, standard wood stove chimney that goes up another 20 some feet to above the ridge of the building so we want to clean this out because we're going to we're going to pull this off and fill this area with gravel after we put in a uh, uh, an elbow so that there's a place for our uh, our new uh, stove to attach and you can see it got so hot in there that we at one point we had another piece of this is a little piece of, uh, of, of wire and we had another one up here holding this together and that's long since melted away because it got so hot in there and we want it to be hot in there because that that heat means that the that the wood gases are completely burned rather than condensing on the inside of the system and uh, and causing a chimney fire because creosote is highly flammable. All right, pause. 